Good afternoon. I'm Adam Brooks and I'm Jesse Zaro. And today we're going to talk to you about what's missing Koha from a marketing perspective. Um, well, everyone at KohaCon 20 already knows that Koha is the premier ILS on the planet. There are still thousands of libraries that are not yet convinced. As hard to believe as that is, the perspective from the sales side of Koha can help all of us understand what libraries are looking for as they change systems. Focus in this presentation will be given to what potential partners ask about, don't believe, and ask for as developments. Marketing of Koha to the masses can be much better, but how do we do that? I always say, shout it from the mountaintop because Koha is amazing. <laughs> My name is Jesse Zaro and I'm the Marketing and Outreach Coordinator at Bywater Solutions. I spent about 15 years working in libraries before I made the transition over here to Bywater Solutions to provide education for our partners. And I'm Adam Brooks. I'm the Western and International Sales Consultant for Bywater Solutions. And I also spent about 15 years in libraries um, as a library director and uh, moved to different public libraries over to Koha during that time. And now I'm working for Bywater for the last three years. So the first thing we want to start with is what libraries ask for. And we're in a unique situation at Bywater Solutions where there's a couple different ways that we get feedback from libraries. So when we're talking to libraries who are contemplating the switch from their legacy ILS over to Koha, we have a few ways that we can do this. So number one is if we're doing an RFP, that's a request for proposal. And that is where a library will say, this is what we're looking for in an ILS. I, I write, I take the RFPs, review them, see if they are something that Koha will meet uh, the needs for the library or closely meet that need. Um, we review the functionality uh, that they're requesting. Uh, I go back and forth with our team of educators, systems, support, developments to see if there are things that we can do. And then if it seems like a uh, project that we could win, uh, we go, go forward and, and do the process. RFPs are very time consuming, but they are really a wealth of information as far as determining what libraries have on their wish list. Um, booth interactions, if we are at a library conference, whether it's a national conference, something like COACON, or a statewide conference that we have here in the States, it's a great way for us to talk to potential librarians, find out what they're looking for, what's the next thing on the horizon that they want to see in an ILS. And, and also, and the booth interaction is talking to our partners and, and finding out things that they need, um, such as now curbside service and things like that that have changed. Um, getting to know that uh, by, by talking to people that are actually there on the front lines is, is really crucial for us. And, and that's why we make a, a real effort to attend as, as many conferences as possible. And then a, a final thing that, that we, we go through is, is, is we do have libraries that don't go through an RFP or bid process, they know they want to move to COHA, um, whether it's they've heard from someone else or, or, or something like that. We have the opportunity then during those conversations as we put together the proposal, uh, the contract, to, to find out things that they think they might need in the future, uh, things that they're concerned about. Um, it's really a, a very valuable part of the process when we are able to go back and forth with them during that process. The next thing that we'll talk about is, you know, what they don't believe. So when we're talking to libraries that have been on a proprietary system for a very long time, sometimes we talk to libraries, they've been on the same proprietary system for up to 30 years. There's a lot of myth versus reality that we have to have a conversation about. I think the first one is, you know, that open source software is perceived less secure than proprietary software. And this gives us a great opportunity for you to talk about how open source software 
really allows you to identify issues quickly and fix them in the system. Another another myth that we, we get constantly is that there is a enormous IT staff that's necessary to, to maintain open source software. Um, and I'm lucky enough to have some director experience behind me and I, I always like to use the my experience with Bywater Solutions. Uh, I signed a contract with Bywater and the following Friday I had to terminate my systems librarian and we did not have a new systems librarian in place until the day we went live. So I'm, I'm really able to to debunk a lot of that stuff just by my experience. But um, we also are able to tell them, you know, Bywater supports and maintains your software, giving your systems people even more time to do stuff that you're not able to do even with your proprietary system. Sometimes the question comes up, there's less support for open source software. There is a worldwide community of users that support and develop and continually improve open source software. Koha has one of the most amazing open source communities out there. Whether you're jumping on IRC to talk to somebody, you're communicating back and forth in Bugzilla about a future development or enhancement or a fix in the system, you can easily help improve that software. Another thing we, we in my experience that I get a lot is they don't believe the price. They have proprietary experience and they will be like, I can't believe a SIP connection is free. I can't believe that you can give us Spanish and Creole and that's not an extra cost. Things like that that really are just, yes, we, we really just have to say, yes, we do really do that. And so it, it's really um, an, a, an experiential thing for a lot of libraries that they, they have been charged for things that uh, they really didn't need to be charged for. And so uh, that's always an education piece as well. The next thing is, you know, what Koha doesn't have. So we get to hear this information, what, you know, people ask for questions and, and maybe Koha doesn't have that functionality. Number one, Bugzilla is a great place to put in suggestions where people can track that. At Bywater Solutions, we also have a development crowdsourcing site. This allows our partners to come in and make suggestions of what they'd like to see. And then there's also a collaborative effort. So now you're getting that marketing out to multiple people and they're coming together to collaborate on a development. So this is a great way for libraries not only to put their ideas together, but to work together to make it happen in the community. Another um, avenue that I did mention earlier is the RFP and bid process. We get to read through these functionality um, worksheets for different libraries who are not using Koha and we are able to see what they expect from their next ILS system. And if we see a re repeat offenders in these lists, we, we start tracking those. And we have a, an extensive, extensive spreadsheet tracking uh, things that we see in these um, requests that, that people want. So the next question is, how do we change their mind? You know, how do we get them pumped up about Koha and how do we market that to people that don't know anything about Koha and, and the community that there is? So uh, one of the, the big things that we try to do with our partners is uh, to get the libraries to share their story. Um, white papers, uh, we, we've asked numerous partners to help us with writing white papers. Uh, Virginia Tech is an example here on the screen. Um, an, another huge one for me as a salesperson is references. Finding those partners who are your confidential informant, your, your person that you really want another library to talk to. They're, they're basically a better salesman than I can be. They can tell. They can tell you. I'm loose. I'm using it now. I. This is how. This is what we've been able to do better. This is what um, uh, programs we've been able to add. And 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 another piece. This is what we saved. This is how much of our budget we can move to programs or people rather than our ILS. 
Summits are another great way um, to get libraries to share their story. We do something called Koha Summits where we get our partners to do presentations on how the migration went for their library from their legacy ILS to Koha and then talk about how Koha has helped them um, in, at their library. The next suggestion is to publish what the libraries are saying about Koha. This is a great way to get the message out to non-Koha users. You know, share it on social media, publish it on your website, take it to conferences, wherever you're getting out in front of libraries who aren't using Koha, this is a great way to collect information and push it out. So you can see the one here on the left hand side, we have one of our partners that was talking about the curbside plugin for Koha, um, how it was a great way to quickly get that into the community and make it a service that's available to everyone. And then of course, one on the right here that talks a little bit about the migration process and how they tell us right away that they wanna pass that information on to their peers. So publishing what libraries are saying about Koha is a great way to market that information to non-believers. And a big part of that has been getting all of our staff to participate, to know that we want these quotes. Um, we have a channel to, dedicated to, if you get a quote, let, let's make sure that it gets to our outreach person, which is, which is Jesse. And, and then another piece of that is that we do quarterly calls and emails with all of our partners um, just to check in on them, see what outstanding support issues they have, and then this is also this is usually a very good opportunity for us to get those quotes. Um, we 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 ask them what we're doing right, and and a lot of times that's where we we pick up a lot of this. The next thing we try to do is have open webinars and demonstrations where we can talk to our potential partners. And so this gives us a great way to do Discover Koha webinars where we do a brief walkthrough of both the OPAC and the staff client and we can talk about the great features that are in there. Sometimes we keep them very general. Sometimes we focus on certain types of libraries so we can drill in on the amazing features that Koha has for those libraries. Another thing we, we do with demonstrations is that we, we, when we're at a conference or event, we schedule booth demos. We have, the, we have them set for a specific time um, on each day, uh, depending on the product and, and, and what we want people to see. Um, we send that information out to all of our potential partners, as well as our current partners. Another opportunity to have a current partner sitting at a demo and talk to someone who is, is interested in Koha. Conference participation. This is a big one that we'll probably talk about. Conferences can be international. They can be right within your country or your state. This is a really great way to collaborate with other libraries who may be using Koha, um, partners that you have, even vendors that you've collaborated to work with. You know, showing the integration with third party products with Koha, whether it's setting up EDI for acquisitions ordering or some type of interface that you use for maybe discovery. It's a fabulous way to get that information out to users that again, don't know about Koha. Yeah, I, I, would, I would go even further with that. A, a good portion of my conference participation is actually going around the exhibit hall and, and talking to um, other vendors and uh, whether we collaborate with them or want to collaborate with them and, and, and seeing what they're doing. And I think it's, it's really effective to talk to uh, other vendors at these events. Just a few of the pictures you see up on the screen here. Um, throughout the, the last few years, whether we've been um, working with a library um, for a statewide conference and, and talking about our collaboration, um, national conferences, talking about open source in general, um, working together with other open source communities, and, and then also getting the word out about Koha. And a little shout out to Micah, who's one of our library partners. Um, 
that's her in the upper right corner. Uh, again, talking about just wonderful ways that open source and Koha can work with your library. So when it's coming from uh, you know, a librarian and getting that message out, people really value the opinions and what they have to say from those users. So conference participation or any type of event where you can talk and really spread the message about Koha is an excellent opportunity to market to those non-believers. And, and one more um, piece of the conference participation uh, that we really try to capitalize on is we try to at least have one event uh, for our partners while we're there. Um, uh, we, have a, we, we invite our current partners and potential partners, again, an opportunity for people to network. Maybe they're talking about college football, maybe they're talking about COHA, but, but we are able to, to, to work that room, meet new people, um, and, and it's, it's, it's very effective for us uh, on, a, on a sales level and a marketing level. So we hope you have questions for us. We'd love to hear what you're doing to market to those non-believers. We hope that some of the topics that we covered today, you know, help you spread the word about Koha, whether it's outreach and talking about Koha at an event, whether it's in the presence of other libraries or gatherings. Yeah, definitely. We're, we're always open to questions. I'm gonna put our contact information on the screen. Please feel free to reach out to either I or Jesse. We're always happy to answer questions and uh, thank you so much for the opportunity to present today. Thank you so much.